there was a deer black lady there and uh, she looked at me and she said who are you here to see and roger would not come to my mind <laughs> i said beard she got on looked on her she said first name <laughs> i said ma'am i can't think of it. and anyway uh, uh finally i said booty and she said booty <laughs> and uh, Finally, she said, where does he live at? And uh, I said, Big Sandy. And finally, she, and it come to me about that time, Roger. It's just like a light bulb in my head. But it's good to see each and every one of you and proud to have y'all here at this memorial, like I said, for my brother, Booty. And let us pray before we get started. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this an opportunity to gather together here, Lord, in this memorial service for my brother booty beard lord dear heavenly father i just ask lord for your spirit to dwell amongst us here lord and i know booty spirit is here with Amen. us today lord then heavenly father i just ask lord to just touch each and every one here today lord as we honor the life of this fine man lord dear heavenly father i just ask that you be with me lord i pray lord to, Give me the courage and the, and the words to say, Lord, and I know you will, Lord, and I just ask you to be with the Booty family, Lord. I pray for your grace, Lord, and I pray for your healing and your comfort, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, I know there will be some trying times ahead for this family, but I know you're going to be with them, Lord. You said in your words, you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, and I know that I believe that with all my heart, Lord. And I just ask you just to let the Holy Spirit, Lord, just uh, dwell amongst us, Lord, and be with us, lead, guide, and direct us as I ask all of this in Jesus' name for His sake. Amen. 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 All right. We're here to honor Roger Lee Beard today. Roger Beard, 57, of Big Sandy, Tennessee, passed away on Sunday, September the 11th at Jackson Madison County General Hospital. Mr. Beard was born on March the 24th, 1965 in Dyersburg, Tennessee to the late Arnold Beard and Evelyn Newhouse Beard. He was also preceded in death by a daughter, Shelly Renee Beard. Mr. Beard worked at Henry County Hardwood. He enjoyed gardening, music, and most of all his family. He is survived by his wife, Tanya Beard of Big Sandy, Tennessee, his son, Joshua Kamen Beard of Big Sandy, a brother, David, Becky Beard of Big Sandy, sisters, Janice Garner of Big Sandy, Tennessee, and Robin Presley of Big Sandy, and several nieces and nephews. <coughs> We know right now, as I'm standing here in front of y'all, that, that Booty and Shelly is in heaven. And they're rejoicing for having this group of people here today to celebrate his life. And dear, I, I just uh, know that our Heavenly Father, Lord, is, is there with them. And uh, like I said, they're looking down right now and, and rejoicing. Uh, I had the pleasure of picking Shelly up on that old church van that I used to drive there. I'd pick her up to go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and uh, I just got bonded with Shelly, and I, I love Shelly. And uh, like I said, I, I'm proud to stand here and know that Shelly is with the Lord, along with her dad. <coughs> and uh, Josh, I tell you, uh, I admire Josh. He, uh, he's a fine young man, and uh, I had the pleasure here the other day. Tanya had called me, and, and Booty had took a turn for the worst, and, and Tanya wanted me to pray that she would come, make the decision, you know, about putting Booty back on the life support. And I told her that I would light into praying with her you know that she could make this decision i tell you that is a that's a rough decision to make i had to make that decision with my oldest daughter here back in march of uh, 21 
a little over a year now, and uh, I know that it's tough. But anyway, I had the opportunity to ride with old, old Josh down there to Jackson uh, to uh, be with his dad. And when I got down there, guess what? Booty was, he was uh, still coherent. When I walked in the room there, he, at first he was, uh, he was sort of sleeping. They'd probably give him something, you know, to help with the pain. But anyway, he come to, and he recognized me. That's amazing how Booty was uh, during his last days. He knew people, he knew everybody. And he, he was just, uh, I, it was hard to believe that he was that coherent. <coughs> And knowing everybody, and he wanted always wanted me to pray. I'd ask him, say, "Boo, you want me to pray before I go, or when I got there?" And he, mm-hmm, and uh, he he was just sincere. One day I went down there to visit him. Uh, the first time that I went down to the hospital to see him, and uh, I had been to Booty's house there before uh, Booty had that bad episode when the ambulance had to come get him and and I was able to share with Booty Jesus. Uh, I was able to share with him and witness to him and and Booty uh, I know I knew when I left there that day Booty knew the Lord and you know what Tanya uh, followed me outside that day and uh, said Billy Red is just amazing said uh, Booty hadn't been uh, this way. He hadn't been uh, coherent, you know. He had been uh, like in and out and uh, talking out of his head and stuff, you know. But when I came in there that day to visit him, and Tanya told me, said that she couldn't believe it. Said that Booty uh, just uh, immediately uh, knew me, and uh, we we sat there and shared stuff together. But like I said, we talked about Jesus. And uh, Booty just had Jesus, he came to know Jesus in his heart. You could tell he was just, a, he had a glow about it. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. And I, I you know, it's, it's, a, it's just an honor for me to be standing up here today and uh, proclaiming uh, Booty knew the Lord. And I know where Booty's at. You know, this it's, it's is the first time I've ever been up to uh, even uh, preach, uh, not pray, y'all know me, I'm, I'm not a preacher, but I'm a teacher and I have the Lord in my heart, I have the Holy Spirit in my heart, and uh, anyway, uh, y'all pray for me that I'll be able to uh, my, to do this, but I know the Lord's going to be with me, so here we go, John, I'm going to read out of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> It says, let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And here it is, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus. Jesus. Only through Jesus. And then John chapter 15, verses 12 and 13 says, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, Booty was a compassionate, loving fellow. I'm telling you, I, I, ever since I've known him, I met Booty back in the 80s, in the, in the oh, middle 80s. And I, that has been one trait about him that has always blessed my heart. And a story about Booty and his love for his fellow man is uh, I, I got a, really got a kick out of this now. It says Booty would stop 
this is uh, Tanya here, I think, told, is telling this story. It's about Booty stopped to help everybody. If they seen him, Booty seen somebody on the side of the road, he gonna stop and help them. And one day he saw a black woman and a young son broke down. He was working on the car, trying to get it going for the lady, when a truck pulled, cl pulled up close and uh, started doing donuts and <laughs> shooting in the air Look for the gun. The little boy that was with the lady got down on the floor in the back and said, Mama, what's going on? And the mom said, I don't know, baby, but we got to get out of here. <laughs> and Booty took a part off of his own truck and got them going and just walked, uh, Booty walked on. Took a part off of his truck, got the lady going, and walked the rest of the way home. And his niece, his niece uh, tells a story. One of the stories, Booty always loved to help people. And uh, he he proved that also. Booty proved it. But niece Lacey, uh, is she here? Well, anyway, that's his niece, and her name is Lacey. Says, when I think of my Uncle Booty, words can't sum up how much he really was. He was one of the kindest, sweetest people I've ever met. He would put others first. He was always cheerful. A very good person in spirit. He could make you laugh with just his laugh. <laughs> he could. Smile with just his smile. And he would always be there for you if you needed him to be. I'll always remember you and think of you. Says Love Lacey. Uh, I say, I got another one here. <clears throat> He's always trying to help, you know. But this time he might not have been, ought to have been trying to help because his sister-in-law, Tammy, remembers old Booty there trying to help with the potato salad and he was trying to mash butter up there. And said, said that the family has laughed about that through the years. But anyway, he, he loved to help. He's helped me. I, I mean he has. He's helped me several on several occasions. But anyway, I... I I just like I said, Booty is my brother. He was always my brother when I needed someone. And he loved in his obituary here he talked about him he enjoyed gardening, music and his family. And I'm gonna tell you something. They could grow he could grow the biggest sunflowers that I've ever seen in my life. The biggest bloom and the seeds. They that I mean literally they was that big when they lived there at Randy's camp. When I'd go down the road there, they lived on down in there, but I tell you what, you could see their sunflowers. And Christy and I visited with them several times, several occasions, and they'd always have the most beautiful gardens. And they do over here too, on Danville Road. They got a beautiful garden and seat to sit there, you know, and just look at nature. I think that they love nature and what God put here on this earth, the Creator. You know, uh, we we worship a Creator. He created this work, this earth. He hung the stars. He put the planets on an axis, spinning out here in in empty space. Uh, that that that's how big God is. But anyway, uh, Booty loved music also. And I got a little story here about Booty. Uh, he, he had one of his favorite songs was, was Knocking on Heaven's Door. And I love that song too. And uh, anyway, let's see, where is it at here? I know what it was. He, he was trying that. They had, I think it was Eric Clapton maybe that had the song that they were trying. Now Guns and Roses. Yeah. And they was listening to that song and Booty was trying to listen in, you know, and uh, and enjoy the music. Well, there was two or three around him there doing this, you know, talking. <laughs> I think Booty said, if y'all are quit that talking, 
<laughs> so I can listen to this song. I said, y'all want me to listen to the song? I can't even hear it for y'all talking, you know. <laughs> but he loved his music and he loved his gardening. Uh, like I said, when they lived there at Randy's camp, Christy and I used to go down there and just sit with them, you know. And that was a beautiful place. And like I said, them old sunflowers were just, uh, just beautiful. I'm going to read now out of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 to 57 it says now this I say brethren that flesh and blood, blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither does corruption inherit incorruption behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. You know, when Booty closed his eyes in death, he was changed in the twinkling of an eye. He went to be with the Lord. And I couldn't even imagine standing up here and, uh, and talking about him without knowing in my heart that Booty's in heaven. And like I said, and I know Shelly is in heaven, and I know they're, they are together and uh, rejoicing right now. It says, <clears throat> O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus. It's only through Jesus that we can that we can be with Booty and and Shelley. And I tell you, I, like I said, I couldn't imagine standing here um, today, not knowing where my brother was at. And I know where he's at. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, well, I tell you what, I need a uh, bigger Bible, I guess. 2 <laughs> Timothy chapter 4, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 8 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This day and time, people don't want to listen to sound doctrine. They don't want to listen to uh, the, the scripture. They don't want to listen to you telling them about Jesus. <laughs> Brother Randy, he and I get tickled there thinking about uh, one day we was coming, one night we was coming in from a camp meeting and. Uh, we stopped at a truck stop or something to get gas and uh, there was a guy who was a foreign feller. He come up and he had the neatest car on a trailer. It was an old antique car. I never seen one like it. But it had a cross on the emblem like the, the name of the car. And we started talk, we talked to him for a while. But we when we mentioned the name Jesus Christ, boy, he cut shut, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm so thankful that 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 we that when we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, it says that they shall turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Booty knew that his time of departure was at hand. He knew that it was. But here is Booty right here and says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You know, Booty knew his time was at hand, and 
I, I really like this little story right here. It talks about Booty. Uh, it talks about Booty uh, talking to uh, Robin right before Booty's death. He, he, he was talking to his sister. And he told his sister, and they were just sitting talking, just the two of them. And he, Booty knew he was dying. And he told her, he told Robin, he said, don't wait to do something. Don't put it off. And he told her that from his heart to her. And I tell y'all today, if, if you don't know Jesus, please, please accept him as your Savior. But anyway, he, he, talk, he was talking to Robin there from the heart because he knew he was leaving. And, you know, down at the Jackson Hospital there, I walked in there that, that first time I went down there. <clears throat> and this is the mate. Booty had that respirator, had that tube down in his mouth, <coughs> bless his heart. He had that respirator, you know, that life support run down in there in his lungs. And that thing was breathing for him. But I'm telling you, i never seen nothing like it. They came in there and started uh, looking at Booty and, and examining him and all. And, and when I got there and Tanya was there, but Booty was talking to with that thing in him now. He was communicating with us. And that doctor come in there and got to checking him out and stuff and said, uh, uh, I, we're going to take this thing out of him, you know, because we don't, he didn't think that, that uh, they needed it, you know, anymore. Booty didn't need it, and Booty said, mm -hmm, get it out. Yeah. <laughs> he was wanting that thing gone, you know, and who can blame him, I tell you. But anyway, when they got that out of him, he sat there and carried on a conversation with us, the best you've ever heard. I mean, he was just, mine was sharp. And I've seen them things took out of people. I've had the experience of be, being beside uh, people's bedside with that. My daughter, bless her heart, when they took that thing out of her, all she done was just breathe and gasp for every breath. And she lasted like an hour before she finally took her last breath. But as soon as they took that thing out of me, he was talking and talking and, and laughing with us. And he, he had some expressions. Now, a lot of times if he'd get, he'd, he'd get uh, uh, aggravated at something, he'd put my arms up like that, you know. Bless his heart. But anyway, as soon as he got to talking and uh, got his mind back about him, he looked at dead at me and he said, Billy Red, I'm a religious man now. <laughs> That's what he said. And oh Lord, that just blessed my heart so much it did. Y'all just don't know. And I love my brother now. I did. Booty, I'm telling you, that as I've been telling these stories, he'd do anything for you. And he loved everybody. He did. But anyway, I'm proud that I, I did know him. And I'm proud standing here that he is, was my brother. He still is. And one day I'm going to go be with him and we're going to have some more <laughs> good times. I guarantee you. But I, when I went to come uh, there to the house, when I came to their house, I was sitting in there with them and just carrying on having a big time and uh, I told them, I told Billy and Tanya, I said, I came here to minister to y'all. And guess what? I'm being ministered to. And Booty was still just free hearted and wanting to give me this and give me that, you know. And that, like I said, they ministered to me. Uh, that's something. I say in Hebrew, Chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a, high, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest now. After the, this is during the Old Testament times, you know, 
they had the high priests and the different priests there in the temple and they bring animals in and sacrifice them, you know, and pour their blood out and the priests would do this and that with their blood and their parts and, and then once a year the, the old high priest he would go into the there in the temple and you had different sections of the old temple there and uh, the high priest he would go into the holy of holies back in there with blood and sprinkle that blood around the, the mercy seat but you guess what God sent his only begotten son to this old world that you and I might have forgiveness, that we may ask forgiveness for our sins. And he sat there on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. He is. All we have to do is ask. We have Jesus now. We don't have to go to no high priest. Back in, they had to bring their best animals in there, you know, to be sacrificed that their sins may be forgiven. But now we have our Lord and Savior. <coughs> it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. And right now I know that that this family is going to need help. And they're going to need grace to get through this. But, like I said, He came to this world, God's only Son, went to the cross, died on that cross. But what, what, what is we have an assurance of is that after three days, He arose. And He lives. He lives in my heart today. And I'm so thankful for that. And anyway, I was going to read uh, 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 another story here. It says, uh, Niece Mary, that'd be my neighbor. Mary uh, remembered Booty saying, That's what I told her earlier. There he liked the song, Knocking on Heaven's Door. But her, here's who was there when they were trying to play this song for Booty. It says, uh, Shelly and Tanya. Her, uh, Mary. It was Mary, Shelley, and Tanya was the one talking so much he got frustrated and said, can y'all just please be quiet so I can listen to that dang song. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I got another one here about another neighbor. Uh, old David. I tell you, that David, he's got nine lives. I never seen that. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like David. He's a one of a, he's like Booty too. He's one of a kind. But I guarantee you, there's no, nothing like him. But David said he had a lot of memories. But a standout was Booty working on his motor, getting mad and banging them. And then, and uh, Booty's dad, Booty and David's dad was there. Uh, and he said, and Booty, I guess, was like me. I've been guilty of <laughs> hitting it with a hammer trying to get it going, you know. But his daddy he called him Pop, I think. He said, son, you don't bang on that motor. And then it wasn't long after that that uh, David saw his daddy, old Pop, <coughs> banging on his motor. And David told him, said, Dad, you don't bang on it the same thing you told Booty. You know? <laughs> I can see them now. I never had the opportunity of meeting Mr. Arnold Beard, but I've heard a lot of stories, and I tell you what, he, his, 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 his kids there, I tell you, they some dandies now, and I have had the honor and pleasure of knowing all of them, uh, all, all of his children. But uh, another story there, let's see. Uh, well, where is it at? Oh yeah, <coughs> Becky. Becky there, Booty. You know he had a way of making you laugh. He had just this his <laughs> way he laughed. He had a unique laugh about him, you know. But Miss Becky, when she was uh, remember when she was pregnant or no, when she had Vanessa, and here come along old Booty. 
and made Miss Becky, after she had Vanessa, made her laugh so hard that she popped her teeth. <laughs> That's the story there now. I'm here to tell you. But <laughs> anyway, Hebrews uh, 9, chapter 9, <laughs> verse 27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die, and then after that, the judge. And I pray that each and every one, like I said, can come to know the Lord before we do close our eyes in death. Hebrews 9, it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. And this is one of my favorite scriptures here. It is on my uh, daddy's tombstone. And it is found in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 7. Now, like I said, this scripture was my daddy's favorite. And like I said, we had it engraved on this tombstone, 1 Peter chapter 5, 5 through 7. And here it is. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Booty was an humble man. He wasn't a proud man. He was proud of his. Uh, he was proud of his wife and his son and his daughter. But Booty was an humble man, and I always admired that. With Booty, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. He does. He does. He cares for each and every one of us, and He wants to see us have the best in life. And a booty, I know, right now today is, 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 is Josh. He's, he's, he's thinking about Josh and how much he loves Josh. And booty. And uh, anyway, Shelly, she'd go straight to, she'd go to Miss Joyce, too. <laughs> She want to hear some of them stories about her grandma. <laughs> I think they used to go out dancing and stuff, you know. And Shelly was wanting to hear some of them stories. But anyway, I, I do. I have fond, fond memories of that, and I wouldn't take nothing for it. And I wouldn't take nothing for knowing my brother in Christ, Roger Beard. He was a good man, and I, I just I'm gonna miss him so much. And I know the family is. And I'm going to read now out of uh, if I can. <laughs> I want to read out of uh, uh, Revelation. I can't even find it. What I do is well I tell you when you get up here like this and uh, I try to maintain but sometimes I get <laughs> sidetracked but Anyway, I want to close out with reading out of Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In other words, there was no more separation. If we don't know the Lord as our Savior when we leave this world, when we close our eyes in death like booty, if we don't, booted in heaven, booted with the Lord, but if we don't know him, we're going to be separated. It's eternal. I can't imagine being separated from my loved one eternally forever. But we, when we have our Lord and Savior living in our hearts, that separation won't occur. We're going to go be with him. He says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are faithful, are true and faithful. <clears throat> and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. <clears throat> like I said, I, I draw such assurance in that knowing where Moody is at. And then in First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter four, verses thirteen through eighteen, and it reads, "But I would." not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which, walk, which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. And wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, but you know, Booty, one day the Lord's coming back and He's going to come back and rapture the church, His people out. And we're going to meet in the clouds. Well, guess what? I'm going to see Booty about like He was there in those pictures there of the wedding. I told him, Mary, looking at them pictures, I never did get to see old Booty there when he was younger. I said, I met him in the 80s, in the middle 80s. But old Booty's gonna he's gonna have a new body. He gonna he's gonna be like I said, he's gonna be like that like that guy I seen in those pictures. And we we just oh I can't I just can't tell you the, how much my heart breaks for someone that don't know the Lord. And anyway, I thank y'all for this honor of being able to come up here and speak for my brother my brother in Christ that I love so dear. And like I said, one day though, that old cancer, you know, had his man, had had him in a mess, and had his lungs, and oh Lord, had that big booty, poor booty, had them tubes running out his back and all, but he got him a new body. He got him a new body. And he wants to be with us. Booty wants us to be with him. And that is my prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this honor, Lord, for this privilege of getting up here, Lord, and proclaiming your name, proclaiming Jesus, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege and honor of knowing Roger Booty Beard, Lord. You know who I'm talking about. Lord, I just thank you for that privilege. Dearly, Father, I pray that you be with this family, Lord. I pray you just wrap them up, Lord, in your arms and in your grace, Lord. Your grace is sufficient. You said it was, Lord, and I know you're going to be with them, Lord. But I just pray, Lord, that you wrap them up in your arms, Lord, and wipe away their tears, Lord. We're going to be thanking of booty long, forever, for as long as we're on this earth, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing him. And Lord, I just pray you be with us on this Sabbath day, Lord, as we remember him and, and honor him, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for being the man that he was, Lord, and the, and the privilege, Lord, that, that we have of knowing him. And Lord, be with us as we leave here, Lord. Direct our paths, Lord. Just forgive us, Lord, where we fail you, Lord. We fail you so terribly bad, Lord. 
We're just all humans, Lord. We're in this old human flesh, Lord. And we're just old sinners saved by grace. I know I am, Lord. And I thank you for that. Lord, be with us, I pray. So I ask all this in Jesus' name, for his sake. Amen. 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 I thank you all. They got